Bringing you news from here at home, across the globe and the sporting arena. This is News First Primetime News, coming to you live on MTV Sports and Shark TV from our News First Centre here in Colombo. I am Shahin Jurong Party. I'm Sonali Manik Badege. We start off first with a look at tonight's headlines. UPF AMP Sarna Gunawardana remanded until the 23rd. Various factions expressed displeasure over committee appointed to investigate alleged bond scam. <laughs> Central Provincial Councillors submit affidavits seeking the appointment of Tilinabandara Tenakorn as Chief Minister. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will arrive in Sri Lanka tomorrow on a two-day official visit. This marks the first time since 1987 that an Indian Prime Minister has made a bilateral state visit to Sri Lanka. Preparations have been completed to extend a warm welcome to the 15th Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, when he arrives in Sri Lanka tomorrow. The Indian Prime Minister and President Maitri Pala Sirisena are scheduled to hold bilateral talks at the President's house, following which he is scheduled to meet Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Prime Minister Modi will visit the Mahabodhi Agra Shavaka Mahavihara in Maradana at noon and will address Parliament later in the day. On Saturday, Modi will visit Anuradhapura where he will pay homage to the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi. The railway service between Talemana and Madhavache will also be launched on Saturday by the Indian Prime Minister. He will also visit Jaffna where he will declare open the Jaffna Cultural Centre which was built with aid from the Indian government. Prime Minister Modi will also give homes to several low-income families. The Indian Prime Minister will leave for India on Saturday evening. At the Indian general election held last year, Modi led the Bharatiya Janata Party to a landslide victory, claiming a standalone majority in the Lok Sabha. Ending the 10-year regime of the Congress Party, he took oath on the 26th of May as the 15th Prime Minister of India. Since then, Modi has been seen around the world as one of the most revolutionary world leaders. President Maitri Pala Sena's first state visit incidentally was to India following an invitation extended by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Several bilateral agreements were also signed during this visit. Speaking ahead of the Indian Prime Minister's visit to the country, Chief Minister of the Northern Province C.V. Vigneshwaran says that it is time that the 13th Amendment be replaced with a more dynamic system of devolution of powers. According to the Hindu website, the chief minister suggests that the Indian government, Sri Lankan government and the Northern Provincial Council engage in talks without taking refuge under protocols to find ways of resolving the central problem of the Tamil-speaking people. He said that India could play a positive role in bringing about such a change in political culture. Bishop of Mana, Right Reverend Rayapu Joseph, expects that the visit of the Indian Premier will build a united Sri Lanka with Tamil people having devolution of powers and the right of self-governance. He made this statement at an event held in Jaffna yesterday. I expect that he will arrive at a concrete decision based on the truth of the people and work based on justice to bring about true reconciliation, peace and harmony. This is a country with two ethnicities. The people of both ethnicities have the right for self-governance. This visit will pave the way for a united Sri Lanka that will have Tamil people living happily in their homeland with devolution of power and self-governance. The leader of the war-affected people's movement, Sahadevan, commenced a hunger strike opposite the public library in Jaffna today, citing ten demands they have of the visiting Indian Prime Minister. Sahadevan staged this hunger strike seeking attention for problems faced by the Tamil community. He calls on the visiting Indian Prime Minister to take a position in favour of the Tamil community at the UN to reach a political solution and to press for the construction of a memorial for those who died in the war, among other demands. <laughs> The implementation of the housing project of the Indian government for those affected people has not come as a solution. They said 50,000 houses will be given to war-affected Bundy people. Then it was said it was for the north and east. Now it looks like there is a situation where those who are not affected by the war will reap these benefits. There has been no action so far on the fishermen who cross borders. The northeast fishermen have been affected by this. The people of the northeast who were affected by the war are looking forward for a change in their lives through the visit of the Indian Premier. The Indian Premier has to send a strong message with regard to the people of the north and the east. We have started this hunger strike for this purpose. 
court today denied permission for the chairman of avant-garde security services, Nissanka Senadipati, to travel overseas. This decision was made when the case pertaining to avant-garde security services was taken up at the Kalamu Magistrates Court today. Presenting facts to court, the Criminal Investigations Department requested that as investigations over the floating armory in call and the armory at the BMICH are ongoing, permission should be denied to the chairman of the avant-garde security services to travel overseas. Appearing on behalf of Nisanka Senadipati, attorney at law, Dulinda Vijay Surya said that his client has been invited to visit Nigeria. He added that if his client missed this visit, Sri Lanka would lose revenue of around 3,500 million rupees. The Criminal Investigations Department said that although the Ministries of Defence and Foreign Affairs have directed two letters to the Attorney General, the AG is yet to respond to the letters. The case will be taken up in court again on the 21st of June. UPFA parliamentarian Sarana Gunavardhana has been remanded until the 23rd of this month. Sarun Gunabodhan was called to the CID to record a statement in connection to an incident where he had obtained a sum of 9.6 million rupees from an individual for a stock of steel and not delivered it to the respective individual. Police media spokesperson ASP Ruan Gunasekura said that MP Sarun Gunabodhan was remanded after being questioned by the CID this afternoon. He was later produced before the Athanagala Magistrates Court and was remanded until the 23rd of this month. United People's Freedom Alliance MP Sajin Divas Gunavardhana was summoned to the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption to record a statement once again today. Sajin Divas Gunavardhana arrived at the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption over a complaint regarding his assets and a statement was recorded. A complaint has been filed against me. I came here to provide a statement. What was asked from you? That cannot be said. What is asked and said is a privilege of the commission. What do you have to say on the allegations against you? I will provide the respective answers to that. That is why I came here. What do you have to say to the people? When an investigation is ongoing, I will provide the details pertaining to that investigation to the relevant institution. Everyone can witness what will transpire after the investigations are over. You are connected to your planes. Are your planes parked at the airport? Answers will be provided. You can see that in the future. What is your view on the investigation? The investigation is legitimate. There is freedom in the country for anyone to file a complaint. I have the freedom to face that complaint and hand over all the details. This is what is happening. Is this harmful? There is nothing harmful in the law being implemented. What is harmful is the media circus. The committee appointed to investigate allegations of insider training in a recent bond issue of the central bank has become the subject of much criticism. The Prime Minister on Monday appointed a three-member committee comprising of Gamini Pitipana, Mahesh Kalugam Pitiya and Chandimal Mendis to investigate the alleged scam in the bond market. Nishant Sri Varna Singh of the Anti-Corruption Front claims that the chairman of the committee, attorney at law Gamini Pitipana, has close ties with the United National Party. He says attorneys at law Mahesh Kalugam Pitiya and Chandimal Mendis too are closely associated with the UNP. <laughs> In truth, when we look at the backgrounds of the three lawyers who have been appointed, it is clear that they are connected to the UNP and have interests in the UNP. In truth, in a legal sense, we haven't really seen Gamni Pitapana functioning as a lawyer. He has been a businessman. Mahesh Kalgampite is a popular criminal lawyer. Chandimal Mendes is a novice lawyer. To add to that, the backgrounds of these three lawyers are closely linked with the UNP. It is exceedingly clear that they have an interest in the UNP and are connected to the party. Can we expect a fair investigation from such a team?
We have highlighted that the fraud that has been committed is very serious. We are prepared to furnish all the information at hand for an investigation. We are taking steps to refer this case to the CID. Investigations into this must be expedited. Bids have been called for more bond issues. It is clear to us that if no concrete steps are taken, the same could happen in future bond issues as well. If you consider the committee that has been appointed to investigate the fraud, our village folk call it getting the story from the rogue's mother. A committee comprising of three friends of Ranil Vikramasinghe has been formed. Why is it that this government, which entrusts all other investigations to the CID, has failed to take similar action in this case? Has the Prime Minister followed a procedure of accountability to conduct an investigation after this fraud came to light? Can there be faith in the three committee members? Is this how they hope to catch the thieves? This corruption, this irregularity has occurred in a ministry under the leadership of Ranil Vikramasinghe. If anyone is to resign over this, it should be Ranil Vikramasinghe. The three-man committee that has been appointed by the Prime Minister consists of three lawyers known to be party loyalists. There is no intimation as to their expertise in terms of investigating financial transactions and certainly not as complex a transaction as Treasury bonds. Therefore, two days later, the public are unaware of what these people have done, this commission, who they have interviewed, if any, and on what basis they are looking into or what they are looking into. The public still remains very much in the dark. In the interest of transparency, President Sirisena will be best advised to appoint an independent panel of experts familiar with the workings of these complex financial issues. They must include, by necessity, a retired central banker, at least at the level of a retired deputy governor, a chartered accountant and a financial analyst. These are prerequisites to establish that there is no chance of a whitewash. The public, very unfortunately, may well be faced with a committee that is half-baked and with a chance that there is a whitewash. A number of heavy vehicles believed to be from the Maganagoma project have been found parked at a plot of land in Viravila. These heavy vehicles have been parked at a land one and a half kilometers away from the Viravila town. A correspondent said that these vehicles are parked adjacent to a land which is owned by the Palmyra Development Board. The state insignia and the Mahanagama name too can be seen on these vehicles, which are 15 tipper trucks and one small lorry with a banner titled Mobile Services. When inquired, the Ministry of Highways said that a statement will be issued after inquiries are made. Moving on to more local news, Minister Sajid Premadasa says that the government is committed to maintaining a clean regime. The minister made this statement while speaking at an event held in Tangol. An event was held to donate building materials for the construction of the Buddhist center in Notol Pitya, Madagama, Tangol. <laughs> Our government is committed to ensure a clean regime 24-7, to provide a clean state service to the public, to maintain a state of maturity in politics. We will undertake every effort to protect the democratic rights of the people of the country and safeguard the people's sovereignty. We will ensure the well-being of the people and safeguard the country's public property.
30 central provincial councillors have submitted affidavits to the governor of the central province to appoint Tilina Bandar Tenakon as the new chief minister of the central province. Now, the provincial councillors had remained opposite the office of the governor even as of this evening. Opposition leader of the provincial council, Ranjit Alubihara, was also among the councillors who had arrived to present their affidavits. UPFS Central Provincial Councillor Thilina Bandaru Tenekon stated that out of those who had handed over affidavits, 15 are from the UPFA. A majority of 58 councillors of the central province has once again requested the government to appoint Thilena Bandaro Tenakun as the chief minister in a bid to make another change in the central province. We have the blessings of all. This will change. There is talk of the national government concept in the country. So the central province too has agreed to that concept. The governor has documents and she has the documents that we have given. Some of the councillors also feel threatened and some are moving away for other reasons. If there is a case, it just keeps on dragging. If anyone can go to courts, nothing will happen. They went to courts in Uber and the case was cast aside. That decision is sufficient for a decision on this matter. There are 58 seats at the Central Provincial Council. Sarat Ekanayaka is the current Chief Minister. Thirty-two affidavits have been presented against the sitting Chief Minister. They require to know my response and what steps will be taken by me. As far as I am concerned, if there is any obstruction from taking this to court, I will look into it and take the required steps in this regard. Convening a press conference today, Chief Minister of the Central Province, Sarat Ekanayaka, expressed the following views. If there's a possibility to change the Chief Minister through presenting affidavits, anyone can do that by handing out bribes. Governors do not have the power to remove a Chief Minister. In addition, affidavits cannot remove a Chief Minister from his seat, according to Clause Part 2E of Article 154. <laughs> A proposal including a number of points that political parties need to focus attention on when granting nominations was unveiled in Colombo today. The proposal was compiled by Election Monitor People's Action for Free and Fair Elections or PAFRO. Termed as the March 12th declaration, the proposal compiled by PAFRO contains three primary points. It requests that when nominations are being made, to consider facts such as candidates not being persons who have been punished for a crime, not being involved in harmful businesses including drugs, not use political power in an arbitrary manner, and also to include a considerable amount of female and youth representation. Government and opposition politicians signed the document. How are the MPs treated today? They are called thieves, ethanol businessmen, drug dealers. There are various allegations. There are bribery allegations. They are being taken before the bribery commission. People question as to what is the use of parliament. To create this, we need good governance. We will fight for good governance. I can see that the opposition leader is writing down his responses. However, I believe that we need to raise these issues, discuss them and call for a dialogue. The system where public representatives will be held accountable for the electorate is being erased and another system is being presented by the United National Party. The only way we can engage in effective politics is through abolishing it. If you are attempting to implement this electoral system for your own political gains, we say do not do it. Do not cause obstructions to the effective political culture in this country. I request this from the Prime Minister. He says that he will dissolve it on the 25th. The question is whether it is to be dissolved on the 25th or is it for us to create a better and effective political culture? This proposal does not say do not provide nominations to persons who switch sides. That must be included. 
There is a proposal to annul the seats of those who switch sides due to a previous judicial order that was cast aside. That needs to be strengthened. <laughs> Former President Mahinda Rajapaksa visited the Mihintale Raja Mahaviharaya this morning. The former president who arrived at the Mihintale Raja Mahaviharaya this morning met with the chief incumbent of the Viharaya, Venerable Vallava Hengunavavi Dhammaratnathera, and obtained blessings. All the development activities have come to a halt. There is no reason for it. The halting of such development project means that the workers will lose their jobs and also the engineers. The local man will also lose the money he has to get. So I think the government needs to be more sensitive on this issue. I don't think it will stop. That is just a waste. We cannot undertake construction on a project such as the Port City project for another 100 or even 200 years. The country will fall back. The government can change. If the regime is not good, it needs to be changed. This is a decision made by the people. So if the next person in power is going to hold such a construction, he needs to be aware of the consequences. I think they need to discuss and arrive at a better solution. Welcome back to the news. The body of an individual buried alive under collapsed dal silo at the dal splitting and processing factory in Pakti Villa, Kalania was found this morning during a search operation. The individual had fallen into the silo at 8 p.m. on Tuesday night at the dal factory in Pakti Villa, Kalania. Employees at the factory said that dal from 70 imported containers are stored in a single silo. The victim was buried alive under the dal when a damaged silo collapsed. A search was initiated by the engineers regiment of the Sri Lanka army on the day of the incident and the victim's body was recovered at 5 this morning. The deceased was identified as 24-year-old Udara Harshika Thilakaratna from Monragala. The Lanka Vehicle Importers Association filed a petition at the Court of Appeal today challenging the Gazette notification issued by the Ministry of Finance on calculating customs duty for vehicles. The attorney at law representing the association, K. D. Kiriweva, said court issued notices on seven respondents, including the Minister of Finance. Taxes on vehicles were amended through the interim budget presented on the 29th of January. The tax revisions caused the prices of hybrid vehicles to skyrocket by between 700,000 and 1.2 million rupees, while an equal tax was imposed on used vehicles, with no charges being made with regard to the year of manufacture. Importers of used vehicles pointed out to the government continuously that this was a grave injustice done to them. As such, the Lanka Vehicle Importers Association decided to initiate legal action. Only the Prime Minister can make policy decisions. The Finance Minister does not have that power. Because it is two ministries, I challenged the Gazette notice. Court noted that the case will be taken up on the 27th and issued notices on the Honourable Finance Minister, the Treasury Secretary, the Deputy Treasury Secretary, the Director General of Investment Promotion and the Director General of Customs. Deputy Minister Dr. Harsha De Silva explained the government's position on the 15% interest rate given to senior citizens on their fixed deposits. The fact is that a senior citizen uh, is eligible uh, to 15% interest up to a maximum of 1 million rupees and that can only be obtained for one uh, bank account. Suppose uh, a senior citizen has two accounts, in one account uh, she has 500,000, in the other account she has 600,000. What she can do is to amalgamate uh, the two and create an account for 1 million and for that 1 million she will get 15% uh, interest and for the remaining 100,000 
uh, she would get the normal interest. The world's second oldest running and oldest uninterrupted annual cricket encounter, the Battle of the Blues, commenced at the SSC grounds in Colombo today. Royal College Colombo, batting first, were bowled out for 199 runs today. At stumps on day one, St. Thomas's College Mount Lavinia were on 50 runs for no loss. Harit Samarasing is leading the Royalist into the 136th Battle of the Blues. The Tomians are captained by Hela Kamal Nanakara. Batting first, Royal College lost their first four wickets for 77 runs. Chamika Karuna Ratna top scored with 57 runs, which comprised of eight drives to the fence and two sixers. Sajitra Jayathilaka bagged three wickets for 27 runs. Royal College Colombo were bundled out for 199 runs in 74.5 overs. Commencing their first innings late in the day, the STC openers Johan Mendis and Dravindi Kodutuaku maintained an unbeaten partnership of 50 runs. And finally, Sports Minister Navin Disanayake says they are still awaiting instructions from the Attorney General over problems that have arisen with election of office bearers for national sports associations. Meanwhile, the National Olympic Committee says it is not prudent to hold elections disregarding the conventions of the International Olympic Committee and proposals presented previously. Never in my political career have I seen as many problems as the amount of problems faced by the 47 sports associations. As the sports minister, I cannot become a dictator and remove all of them. I will act in keeping with the law. The Attorney General has instructed us that positions in sports committees should only be held for four years. I will take a decision upon receiving further instructions from the Attorney General. The Attorney General advised the sports minister recently that persons who have held office in a sports association for four years or more should not hold positions thereafter. The Secretary of the National Olympic Committee, Maxwell De Silva, noted that he had informed the sports minister of the situation that has arisen through a letter. In his letter, De Silva notes that due consideration must be given to agreements and understandings that were reached in domestic talks and in talks held with officials of the International Olympic Committee in Lausanne in 2013. De Silva says in the letter that it would be prudent to postpone elections of all national sports associations until the necessary amendments are made. Well, that wraps up prime time news for tonight. Just a reminder, you can join us tomorrow morning for our live coverage of uh, Prime Minister, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Sri Lanka. We'll be covering uh, the developing story live for you here on News First. I'm Sonali Marikabadge. And I'm Shahin Jirampati. Good night and take care.